Good morning. This is Pastor Kerry Rogers here to give you your morning manna and praise the Lord for another new morning because God is still on the throne and we thank him for all the things that he has given us, the gift of salvation, the gift of the everlasting covenant, the gift of of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So I know you're excited, my friend. So let's go into this morning's manna and eat the bread of life. Amen. Together. Well, this is part two of our study concerning the Godhead. And today we also be looking at God, the father, the role of God, the father. So let's go ahead and go right into it. But first, let's begin with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful and thankful for allowing us to see a brand new morning. And we ask you, Lord, as we go through the word of God, give us clarity and understanding of your word. And we pray that we're all blessed as a result of studying your word this morning. So thank you, Lord, for the manna that comes from heaven. We pray in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Well, my friend, go ahead get your Bibles, get your pens, your papers, take some good notes because this is going to be good. So let's go ahead and start off where we left off yesterday. Now, who is the Godhead? Now, as I mentioned yesterday, the Hebrew word for God is Elohim. Elohim means gods in a plural sense, referring to the Godhead, which is God, the father, God, the son and the Holy Ghost. Elohim is a general title for God, which occurs more than two thousand five hundred times in the Bible. So God is a unity of three co-eternal persons. They are three separate persons holy, infinite, and immortal beings who are equal in power and authority throughout endless space. Now, the word Godhead in the Greek means divinity or divine nature. The Godhead is not one person, but three divine holy beings unified in purpose, thought, character, Again, that is God, the father, God, the son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's allow the Bible to teach us about the Godhead and the role for each one. God, the father, God, the son and the Holy Ghost. We're just going to let the Bible teach us. Let's go to Romans 120. That's Romans 120. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So again, Godhead in original Greek means divinity or the divine nature. The Godhead is Elohim pointing to God, the father, the son, and the Holy ghost. Just want to make that very clear. Now let's see the Godhead revealed and acting as one. Let's go to Genesis one verses one and two. Then we look at verses 26 and 27 in the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth. As I mentioned before, God in original Hebrew in this particular context means Elohim. God's in a plural sense pointing to the Godhead. Let's continue on. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image in the image of God. God created he him. 
male and female created he them. Amen. So we see here that the whole Godhead was involved in the creation of the earth. And so now let's go to the baptism of Jesus and we see the Godhead acting as one, the baptism of Jesus. Let's go to Matthew 3, 16 and 17. That's Matthew 3, 16 and 17. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So again, you see them all three here. You see God the Father, who has said what he says, This is my beloved Son, referring to Jesus Christ. And you see here the Spirit of God which is referring to the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost descending like a dove. Now let's go to Matthew 28, 19. And we're going to hear from Jesus himself concerning the Godhead. Let's go to Matthew 28, 19. And Jesus says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. That's pretty clear. And what you see, the Godhead, all unified, working together. And God mentions all three, which includes himself. Now let's go to John 17, 11, and then verse 21. That's John 17, 11, and then verse 21. We find that Jesus speaks to the Father in his prayer. And let's go and take a look at it. Verse 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. And they all may be one as thy father are in me. Now, verse 21 that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Amen. So we see that Jesus prays to the Holy father. That's God, the father. And again, reveals the oneness of the Godhead. As he mentioned, you and me and I and thee. And he then compares their union to the union of those who believe in him. Now, let's speak about God the Father. How is God the Father clearly revealed to us? Remember, God the Father is the first person in the Godhead. What is the best way to learn about who God the Father is and what he is all about? So let's go to John 14. Jesus tells us clearly. John 14 verses 5 through 12. That's John 14 verses 5 through 12. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. And how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man can come unto the father, but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. And Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the father. And it sufficeth us. And then Jesus said unto him, I have been so long with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip. He that I have seen me, listen, my friend, he that I have seen me have seen the Father. And how saith thou then show us the Father? Verse 10, believeth thou not that I am in the Father, and that the Father in me? 
The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the father that dwelleth in me. He doth the works. Believe me that I am in the father and that the father in me or else believe me for the very works sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me and the works that I do shall he do also. Don't miss this friend. And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father. So in other words, the Lord is making it very clear. Jesus is saying, if you have seen me, the works and the acts that I've done in which I have connection with the father of heaven, all the things that I've done, that is the character of the father. Because remember, they are one in mission, one in purpose. So in other words, if the father and Jesus exchange places and roles, the father would do exactly what Jesus did. Did you get it or did you miss it? So that's what Jesus is revealing. So if you see me, you have seen the father, but the Lord reveals clearly, but I am the only connection to the father. So the only way that we can have connection to the father is through Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let's go continue on and learn some more about God, the father. Now, how much does God, the father love us and what are his roles in the plan of salvation? So let's look at four roles of God, the father in the plan of salvation. And we will see how much he loves you and I role. Number one, out of love, he gave his son, Jesus Christ, to die for the sins of the world. Let's go to Romans 8, 39. Romans 8, 39. And the Bible says, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So it is because of Christ, we have connection to the love of the father. And we see in John three sixteen, which the Bible says, very, very famous verse for God. So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Isn't that wonderful, my friend? And that is the summary of the everlasting covenant because that's what it's all about. And that is the mission of the father and the mission of the son working in unison to save our souls. So praise the Lord for the love of God, which gave his only begotten son. Let's go to first John four, nine and 10. First John four, nine and 10. In this was manifested the love of God toward us. Because God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is what, my friend? Love. Not that we have loved God, but that he has loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. The word propitiation means atonement or covering. So praise the Lord. Now let's look at Role number two. So role number one, out of his love, he gave us his son, Jesus Christ, to die for the sins of the world. Now, what is the second role of God the Father when it comes to the plan of salvation? It is that the Father announces, approves, and confirms his son's ministry to all the world. So let's look at that again in Matthew 3, 16 and 17. Because what do we hear the father say after Jesus is baptized and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight way out of the water and lo, the heavens were open unto him and he saw the spirit of God. That's the Holy spirit descending like a dove and lighting upon him and lo, a voice from heaven. And this voice is the voice of God, the father. And he says, what? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. God, the father announces and approves and confirms 
the ministry of Jesus Christ. That's his second role in the plan of salvation. Let's look at role number three. God the Father hears our prayers through the Son of Jesus. And Jesus teaches us how to connect with the Father through him. And we find in Matthew 6, 6, 8, and 9. Let's go to Matthew 6, 6, and then we're going to look at verses 8 and 9. But thou, when thy prayers enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father. Pray to who? To thy father, which is in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Verse 8. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You reveal clearly to us our prayers that are sent up to heaven. Go to the Father through Jesus Christ. So when we pray, we address God the Father. He hears our prayers. Amen. Through the Son of Jesus Christ. And that is, again, the third row of God the Father when it comes to the plan of salvation. Let's turn our Bibles to John 14, 12 through 14. That's John 14, 12 through 14. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father. And whatsoever thing ye ask in my name, listen now, and whatsoever things ye ask in my name, who's speaking here? This is Jesus. So whatsoever things ye ask in the name of Jesus, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. So again, as Jesus taught us, when we address the government of heaven. We are addressing the father, our father, which art in heaven. But the only way we can make that connection to heaven in which God, the father hears our prayers is through Jesus Christ. Amen. Cause Jesus says, ask anything in my name. So that's the reason why when we end the prayer, we say in the name of Jesus. In other words, we're making our supplications known to the father. But at the end of the prayer, we say what? In the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray to the father. At the beginning of our prayer is our father, which art in heaven. And at the end of our prayer, in the name of Jesus. Because again, Jesus makes that connection to heaven. What is the fourth row of God the father? The fourth and most critical role of God the Father is that he accepts the atonement of Jesus Christ. Extremely important, my friend. Let's read Revelation 3, 5, and 21. Revelation 3, 5, and 21. And he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels to him that overcometh verse 21 to him that overcometh. Will I grant to sit with me on my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. Amen. Amen. So we find clearly here, Jesus confesses our sins before the father and before the angels. And we find that Jesus atonement for our sins, that his sacrifice on the cross is accepted by God, the father. Let's go to John six forty. That's John six forty. John six forty. And the Bible says, 
This is Jesus speaking here. And this is the will of him that sent me that everyone which seeth the son and believeth in him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Amen. So so who sent him? And we already know God, the father. And in knowing this and in revealing to us that if we believe on him, that we can have everlasting life it is also clear that the father accepts the atonement of Jesus. Because if God, the father did not accept the atonement of Jesus, the whole plan of salvation is null and void. So praise the Lord for God, the father accepting the atonement of Jesus Christ in which now, if we believeth on him, we believe it on the testimony of Jesus and all that he has given us and revealed to us by faith. We shall have everlasting life. And that those who die in Christ shall raise up in the last day, be resurrected from those cold, cold graves. Amen. And Jesus promised that he's coming back. It's going to be great. And all this again, it is because of the unity of God, the father, the son, and the Holy ghost. They all have a particular role in the plan of salvation. So the conclusion, let's go to first Corinthians two, nine. That's first Corinthians two, nine. The Bible says, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the hearts of men the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Amen. Isn't that beautiful, my friend? And I pray that this has been inspiring for you. And tomorrow, tomorrow, we're going to continue our study on the Godhead. And tomorrow, we'll be looking at the role and mission of Jesus Christ. And then after that, we'll be looking at the ministry of the Holy Ghost. I pray this was a blessing to you and let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the word. We thank you, Lord, for God, the father and the roles that you have for our plan of salvation. So praise ye the Lord and thank you, Lord, for God, the father, the son and the Holy Ghost. So be with us the rest of this day. Guide us, direct us, lead us, inspire our hearts and minds to stay faithful to your truth. We pray. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen and amen. Well, my friend, we're going to end it right there. But for more information, go to pathwaytopeace.net. That's pathwaytopeace.net. God bless and Maranatha. Maranatha.